guys, welcome back. In this section, we'll talk about how to quantify our investment goals by returns, by rate of returns. Now, the first interesting term is the required returns. Required by who? By ourselves, by investors. Why? Because it's a minimum return, it's the bottom line. Why it's a bottom line rate of return? Because it represents opportunity cost. This gives us the return on the best alternative investment. This alternative investment normally have the same investment period compared to our current investment, and also it carries the same level of risk. So if we cannot have this required return on our current asset, then we would rather just jump off to these alternative investments. So that's an opportunity cost. It represents the bottom line, the basic of our returns. So the required returns, like I just talked about, it's normally determined by the market. Now, can one dream of a different rate of return? Definitely. That's our expectations. You know, what's the fun of just accepting the required return? There's no challenge, right? Only if one can dream, which builds up our expectation. We can expect a different rate compared to the required rate. And actually, it's the reason why you invest, because we're constantly looking for mispriced securities. That's the market gap for us to have the investment opportunity to beat the market. So we can dream of, we can expect a different rate of return compared to the required returns. But can the expected return different than the actual return? Of course, why not? The reality is not dream. Otherwise, we are the king of the world. Well, you can be as long as you want to. Okay, so the realized return, that's our reality, might be higher than our expectations. That's so awesome, that's scored. But if the reality is lower than the expectation, that's also what we have to undertake. It might be caused of risk, might also be caused by our, let's say, misinterpretation of information or misjudgment. So that's the uncertainty we need to undertake. Now, when we build our expectations, it won't be unfounded. It must be based on something. One good example is the historical rate of return. That's the past, right? Because future can find its resemblance or similarity in the past, but future is not a full replication of the past. Otherwise, if we already know what's gonna happen in the future, what's the drive? Right? So, historical return can be a guidance that help to build our expectations and also help to build the required return. Now, a big difference between required and expected return and this historical rate of return is that the above two, required and the expected rate of return, these are not real numbers. They might be different from the reality. But here, the historical rate of return, it is the reality. It has happened before. So these are the two differences. All right? This one is the observations. It has happened. It is hard code truth. Now, how can we give an overview for the past? Normally, we use mean. That's the average. The first measurement for mean is a mathematical mean. Well, it's a straight line mean. We have covered that, I think, in elementary school. I think, no offense, right? Still, we are gonna go over the formulas here. When we calculate the straight line mean, we add all the observations together, and then we divided this sum by the number of observations. It's a ratio, and that's it. Very easy. 
Well, a more interesting, a more relevant term, especially in long-term financial operations, is the geometric mean. The geometric mean is given by the product of all the expected return, and then taking the nth root, and after that, minus one. So that is the geometric mean. In finance, geometric mean tells us over a long time how a financial asset has grown in value. So the first one, the straight line mean, is more relevant in determining the short-term rate of return. This geometric mean gives us the long-term overlook. So you will know what to use when you're looking at how long of the data, how dated back they are, right? Okay. The reason why we can have our expected return different from the reality is because the presence of uncertainty. As I said, when there are multiple future results, each carries a different probability weight, and that builds up our full expectations. When we talk about probability, if we add all the probability together, it will amount to one, representing the full reality. So if we have more than one result in the future, we will have a sequence of probability distribution, which can give us a graphic overlook of risk which is also the reason why we demand returns for our investments. Now, we have talked about the probability. The probability gives us the likelihood of one possible result. It's like how likely you can have this result in realization in the future. So each possible result will be signed with or paired with a probability. And then we times them together. So that's our first set of element. So for example, if we have six possible results and each result have a corresponding probability, if we add these six types of probability together, we will have the number of one representing the full possibility. And for each of the result, we need to multiply them with its corresponding probability. And then we add this product together. So that's a probability weighted expectation. It covers the full base. We have heard that when we do investment, we don't put one egg into one basket. And when we do our expectation, we do the same thing. We hold multiple expectations to have a larger outlook for our future. It is more sensible, it is more rational to do that. And remember, this expected rate of return is normally used to calculate the return of one single asset. But how to calculate multiple assets? Those are the factors of portfolio management, which we will cover in the future chapter. Okay, in this section, we have talked about how to quantify our goals by different types of returns. When we talk about expected rate of return, we have talked about the probability distribution. It is also a guidance for risk. So how can we learn from the probability distribution, and we know more about risk. How can we do that? That will be covered by our next video. Stay tuned. See you next time. Bye-bye.